When we are asked to find a confidence interval for a standard deviation or for a variance, we need to use a distribution that is the distribution for the variance. Now one of the things that might catch you up on this when you start looking at this process is that up to this point you've probably done a lot of work with confidence intervals and probabilities that have dealt with the Z distribution, the standard normal curve, and the student's T distribution. Those two distributions had characteristics that were special to them that we have done over and over. They were symmetric about the vertical line through the mean. Zero was their mean and we had for the standard normal curve, one is their standard deviation. So a lot of that symmetry we are used to. With the chi-squared distribution, we don't have symmetry with this distribution and we also have that our chi-square values are always positive. So we need to make sure that we make the adjustment when we're asked questions that have us utilize the chi-square distribution to keep track of those changes that occur. So let's look at this question about the um, confidence interval. This says a random sample of six steel rods resulted in lengths with a S equal to 2.1 centimeters. Now S, remember, is the notation for the sample standard deviation of 2.1 centimeters. And it says find a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. So we want to find a confidence interval for sigma. And we want to assume that the lengths of the rods are normally distributed. So that allows us to use the chi-squared distribution. Now there will be several places where you work with the chi-squared distribution. And this is probably one of the first ones where it's introduced to you. Here are some components that are a little bit different about the table of the chi-square distribution. First of all, when we look at the heading of this, in a lot of the um, tables that you read, for the chi-square distribution, the area that's listed is the area that's to the right of the critical value. If you recall, with the student's t-distribution or the normal distribution, most often we are looking at area to the left. Here, we're looking at area to the right. We do have degrees of freedom, and we've been introduced to degrees of freedom with the student's t-distribution before. Um, but the thing is that since we don't have symmetry, they can't just give us one portion of the curve and then have us work with our symmetry. They actually have headings of the area to the right of the critical values that will go along with most of our hypothesis testing and, um, like this case, confidence interval type problems that we do. But we need to read, if we need two tables off the, or two values off the table, we need to read those two individual values off. We can't just pick one and use symmetry with it because we don't have a symmetrical curve here. Okay, so back to our initial problem. It says that we want to find a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. Well, the formula in order to calculate this is that our interval is from a low end value of n minus 1 times s squared over chi squared sub right to n minus 1 times s squared over chi squared sub left for a confidence interval for sigma squared or for the variance. If we want to get finally to the um, confidence interval for the population standard deviation, we'll need to take the square root of the numbers after we get them. Now in this part of our formula for our confidence interval here, I have an n minus 1 in parentheses. Well, I know my n is my sample size, so my n is 6 in this problem. I have s square. Um, remember, s square is the sample variance. Well, I have the sample standard deviation, but I can go ahead and know that I'll put the 2.1 in here and then square it for the S squared. But this chi squared sub right in the denominator of the lower end of the confidence interval and the chi squared sub left in the denominator of the upper end of the confidence interval, these values are things that we need to go over and talk about how we get them off of our table. Well, here's what we need to do. We have a 95% confidence interval. And I'm going to draw the sketch of the chi-square distribution 
here and look at what we're talking about. So chi-squared distribution is skewed. If I have a 95% that I'm trying to get between values for a confidence interval, then that leaves 5% to share between the two tails. Well, if I take 5% and divide it by 2 to share between the two tails, that gives me 2.5% for each tail. Because remember, we have 100% of the area under the curve. Changing that to decimal gives me, uh, take the percent symbol off, move the decimal point two places to the left. I have 0 0.025 for this tail and 0 0.025 for the lower tail. Now when I try to use this to work with how the table set up, the table is area to the right of the critical value. So if I think of my critical value being here, and I shade area to the right, that's the same as this upper tail. And that's the 0 .025 area to the right. So I'll find my heading that says 0 .025. And I haven't copied the entire table. I just copied the line I'm interested in. With this application of the chi-squared distribution, our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, just like it was our degrees of freedom with the t-distribution and confidence intervals of the mean when our sigma wasn't known. So our n is 6, n minus 1 is 5. So I'll come down across from 5, and the value of 12.833 is what you should see on your table. Now, to get this other critical value at the lower part of our chi-squared table, I know that to get this one, I need to figure what column to look at, and the column to look at is what we have for area to the right of that value. Well, if I'm looking at area to the right of this whole critical value, I need to grab the 95% plus the 2.5%, so that's going to be a 97.5% or 0.975. So for this lower value, I need to look underneath the 0.975 across from my degrees of freedom being 5, and I get the value 0 0.831. This is my chi-squared left. This is my chi-squared sub right. Notice that because it's the square of a value, it's chi-squared, it's the distribution of the variances, these numbers along the number line for the chi-squared distribution will always be non-negative values. So when I look at this, I see that I have my 0 0.831, a lower value building up to 12.833 which is my um, chi-squared sub right. Now with the formula for the confidence interval for population variance or standard deviation, whichever one they ask you to do, it's different than the confidence intervals that we started with. Confidence intervals for means and proportions start with our point estimate and they increment our error of estimate by subtracting it to the left to get the lower endpoint, adding it to get the upper endpoint. And that was how the distributions of the means and the proportions acted in our sampling distributions. The distribution of the variances and the standard deviations act completely different than that. They have a distribution that has to follow the chi-squared, and to create the confidence interval, it's not an add and subtract thing. It's a division, it's a quotient that gives us out our lower endpoint and our upper endpoint. And the critical values are in the denominator of the fraction. And when I have numerators being the same and I'm dividing by different numbers, I'll get a smaller overall fraction if I'm dividing by a bigger number and a larger overall fraction if I'm dividing by a smaller number. So that's why the chi-squared sub right is in the denominator of the lower 
um, endpoint of your confidence interval. And the chi-squared sub left is in the um, upper denominator for the upper endpoint of your interval. So next off, we're going to go ahead and put our numbers in here. So I have my n is 6, so 6 minus 1 times s squared, s for this problem is 2.1, and I square that because it's the standard deviation. Had they given me the variance for the sample, then I would have just put that number in. So you've got to be very careful about the wording. Divided by chi squared sub right, so chi squared sub right is the bigger number the 12.833, the one that's on the right. Two, and again we have our n is six minus one times the 2.1 quantity squared over our chi-squared sub left, the left number I got off of the critical values, 0.831. Now when you do those calculations, this is going to give me the confidence interval for the variance because the chi-squared distribution is the distribution of the variance. Calculating this out, I get a value of 1.718 to 26.534. But they didn't want a confidence interval for the variance. They wanted a confidence interval for the population standard deviation. And the reason I went through the variances to answer this question is that the variance and the standard deviation have a connection. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So since I have the confidence interval of the variance right now, I'll just take the square root of the lower endpoint and the square root of the upper value in order to get my confidence interval for my standard deviation. So to write out the sentence and to complete this, we're going to say, drop the word find, capitalize the word A, a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation is, and this square root works out to be, 1.31 It's less than my sigma, which is less than 5.15 centimeters. And that gives me my 95% confidence interval for our standard deviation, our population standard deviation, of the steel rods in this example.